All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel, and today we're going to be talking about the mysterious, pretty random, but pretty insane return comeback of Lil Tay. I don't know, I feel like everyone kind of thought that this whole Lil Tay thing was over with five months ago, right? It kind of felt like we'd probably never hear about this girl ever again. It was like one of those things where 2017, 2018, you knew who she was. But like a lot of people from that era, you thought she'd have just faded away. But then this wild, insane death hoax starts going viral. Everyone thinks that this like teenage girl who was relevant half a decade ago died. The whole world freaks out about that. And then it turns Turns out to basically be some massive hoax set up by pretty much someone in her family, which we'll be getting into that a little bit in this video. And then now she's dropping a music video. She clearly has aged since the whole incident, like what, five, six years damn near. So she's a teenager now. And then just like everything just is shifted on its head. I don't know. It's a really wild story. There's a whole lot of updates to what we kind of already supposedly knew about this whole situation anyway. So there was already some rumors of like fan family abuse going around with the whole Lil Tay thing, you know, that maybe her parents were taking advantage of her fame from back in the day, uh, that they were maybe physically and mentally abusive. Basically just one of those like tragic child fame stories where a kid kind of like blows up for whatever reason and then the parents just like go completely overboard and just start treating the child like an object. And there was no real like concrete evidence I don't think for the longest time, but I mean now Lil Tay has finally come out and she's addressed what seems to be the rumors of abuse from parents and family and whatnot, right? And the whole thing is just absurd. She dropped a new song called Sucker for Green. It's been getting completely clowned by a lot of the people who've heard it. Honestly, I've heard the song. I'm not too thrilled or impressed with it. It's not anything I would ever listen to even as like a joke. It's just not really good in my opinion. But she dropped a new song. Uh, she dropped a music video even for this song. And obviously I'm not going to play the music video uh, because it's probably copyrighted. I don't want to get this video copyrighted. And also because for being like a 15 or a 16 year old girl, right, in this music video, there is some scenes in it that honestly I don't think is how a 16 or whatever year old girl should be getting portrayed. Like, I don't know. There, there's just a couple scenes in that video. I don't want to be like, a, oh, well, what about the kids kind of like moralist or whatever here, but it's just like, I don't know. The person who produced this music video, for them to be like, yeah, this is how a 15-year-old girl should be acting. This is this is going to impress people. This is going to be really good. It just, uh, it fucking blows my mind that people think this way. But anyway, and the unfortunate reality uh, that we, I think, should address in this whole thing is some of the online reaction, okay? Now keep in mind, last time we saw Lil Tay, right, she was like fucking eight, nine years old, something like that, right? She was literally a small child, and then now, of course, with the time that's passed, she is a teenage, like, high school age girl, and so she definitely looks different. Like, puberty has obviously kicked in. She's grown up quite a bit, and uh, there's been some pretty weird comments being made by people online. Now, you gotta keep in mind that, of course... Some internet users are like 14, 15, 16, and for them to be like, oh, you know, she's hot or whatever, like that makes sense because they're that age, right? But uh, I'm not too convinced that everybody calling her attractive and saying some pretty out-of-pocket shit I'm not too convinced that everyone is in that age range, bro. I'm thinking there might be some uh, grown men who need their fucking hard drives checked uh, after that music video dropped and they left some comments, bro. So it, it speaks volumes, unfortunately, that when she drops this music video, uh, like on the Dexerto post of the music video, pretty much like the top liked comment was one where someone dropped the snippet of her being like 16 and was like, hey, before you guys get too out of pocket, she's a fucking child. It's kind of sad that that even has to be addressed and that has to be said, but I just, I don't know, man. That That's the reality of this kind of thing. So anyway, she made some pretty uh, damning allegations along with a pretty classic Lil Tay video, so been five years and y'all still broke the go is back five years and i'm still the youngest one out five years and y'all bitches are still broke so don't take it out on me why the 
fuck are y'all coming at me for? Y'all hating ass bitches were hating on me when I was nine years old. Talking all this shit when you don't fucking know me. So stop fucking talking. You did not come up. You had five years to come up and you didn't. So don't blame me, bitch. Five years. Yeah, if this tells you anything, uh, that whole Lil Tay character did not go anywhere. She's been fucking sitting there, not only apparently perfecting, like, 70 different instruments and becoming, like, some sort of modern-day fucking, like, shit, not Shakespeare. Uh, what's the dude's name? Mozart. I'm a moron, bro. I should know these things. But anyway, like, she's over here playing piano flawlessly and whatnot, and, uh, yeah, then this. So, uh, it, she she's doing the same shit, you know what I mean? Like, the same tired joke that wasn't really that funny all the way back in 2018 or whatever when she was a child yeah that's now being carried on as we're going into a young adulthood basically so i don't know personally i don't really find it fucking funny i don't find the shtick appealing it's just like i don't know that this this was barely funny when it first came out you know and like it's good she's not dead don't get me wrong i know that's kind of i'm fucking completely out of left field and i apologize for that but like, it's, it's genuinely a good thing that it was, like, all a hoax and she didn't actually die. But, like, at the same time, just because, like, this viral death hoax got cooked up by your family doesn't really mean we need to be going back to this shit. Like, this is somebody who's clearly talented. Like I said, she was playing fucking piano and guitar. She was, like, playing Metallica, I'm pretty sure, on guitar. It's like, you clearly have skills outside of just, like, being obnoxious for attention. You should, I feel like, pursue those things. And I guess she did that with the song, but honestly you know, the skill isn't, like, translating there. Like, the song was very clearly just a fucking generic pop song made to, like, fit the Lil Tay brand about, oh, I really like money, I really like flexing. It was not anything, like, where she was putting significant creative effort into it, right? So, I don't know, it just, to me, it, it just, it's tiring. But the allegations uh, were pretty serious, so now that we've kind of gotten through all the rest of the shit, Let's go ahead and talk about this part. So uh, I'm quoting Dexerto on this article here. But she basically came to Instagram Live and confirmed some, well, she came out and more or less commented, I should say, on some things that people once again had speculated, right? So after this bizarre string of live streams, she put her father, Chris Hopes, uh, on blast and claimed that he abused her as a child. Lil Tay claimed that her father was having relations with a woman while she was in the same room and that her father was hooking up with random women, quote, all the time that he found on Craigslist. The Instagram influencer also claimed that Hene Hope, the woman who is still with her father, uh, is a scammer and that her father normalized, quote, inappropriate sexual behavior and doing the, quote, most out-of-pocket sh uh, sexual shit in front of me. She also claimed that physical abuse was, quote, common in her household and uh, that her parents traumatized her, forcing her to watch horror movies at a young age while putting her in a chokehold and locking her in a closet. Additionally, Tay claimed her mother was bragging about having expensive hands bags when she didn't have proper clothes to wear. She went on to call Hene a gold digging bitch and alleged that her father owes her a quarter million dollars in child support, something substantiated by court orders uh, court orders for her father to pay approximately $275,000 in child support. So she basically goes to social media and starts airing out all this business. Keep in mind for a while now people have speculated that Lil Tay's parents, more specifically her father, might have been, you know, abusing her in some way, basically. Basically, right and I mean these are some pretty insane allegations to make against somebody right you know accusing your father of basically exposing you to sex as a child in the same room and just doing out-of-pocket things in front of your kid physically abusing your child commonly in your household locking them in closets and shit like that like obviously these are some pretty serious allegations to make and now a lot of people they hear this and they believe it right me personally I'd like to give her the benefit of the doubt these are some pretty fucking horrible things to allege about somebody and regardless of what kind of character you have I would really hope and imagine that people would have the moral dignity even at a young age to not make up shit like this so a lot of people though are not giving her that benefit of the doubt and honestly I can't totally blame them because it seems like every single little fucking thing that happens in the whole Lil Tay thing is just like some sort of scheme or marketing tactic or just something to get the name out there, right? To get press around the situation. There doesn't really seem to be any sort of actual like genuine brand. It's just all about like, oh, what can this fucking 
young flexor do next? Can she throw a quarter million dollars in your granddad's face while rapping about money? Oh, by the way, her dad made up a death hoax, you know? She fucking died, bro. Oh, also, her dad fucking has Craigslist hookers bouncing on it in front of her. Oh, but guess what? I'm still flexing my fucking wealth, bruh. I'm still getting rich, bruh. Like, I don't know, at a certain point, you gotta kind of fucking take something and balance it, I feel like, right? If you're gonna do the character, you can't be saying ridiculous, ludicrous shit, and then just expecting people to immediately believe it. Now, once again, me personally, I will give her the benefit of the doubt, because even though people are fucking assholes, and they will do it, I like to hope that people actually care about their reputation, and wouldn't lie about some fucking terrible shit like this, right? So, overall, it's just been a completely wild situation, right? Like, five weeks ago, we think this kid is dead. Now she's releasing music videos, doing the joke from half a decade ago, I don't know, like, if we're being honest with ourselves here, is this actually sustainable? That's really the question that comes into mind for me, like, you can do death hoaxes, and you can allege abuse, and you can drop music videos, and all this and all that, right? But if you keep building the brand towards just like, oh, what kind of bullshit are we coming up with next? Like, you can't expect that people are gonna want to actually get behind Lil Tay, right? Like, people are not gonna become Lil Tay fans, you know, unironically Lil Tay fans. So, like, I don't know. I, I, I hope somebody in this camp fucking realizes that. It appears from the allegations, if they're true, that Lil Tay probably is not really uh, rocking with her parents very much anymore. So I don't know if she has like a manager or, or what's going on with all that, right? But uh, on top of that, this shit needs to just come to an end, in my opinion, right? Like the whole airing out the family shit. I, I understand like calling people out for doing like some terrible shit, like, oh, these parents abused me and whatnot. Yeah. But like, don't make that the whole brand of this shit, right? Like don't keep constantly having death hoaxes and fucking all these things, because, like, if she continues to identify in any way with her family after this, right, like, it's going to continue that skepticism that a lot of people have, and that's just not going to be good for her long term, so anyway, with all that being said, man, thank you guys for watching, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel, follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus. make sure to check out Shoptimus down below, thank you to my Watch Optimus subscribers, your support helps the channel tremendously, and until my next video, guys, this is Optimus, well, talking about the whole Lil Tay situation and signing out.